What's up guys, my name is Mike and I'm the Weird Pigeon of Weird Pigeon Productions. So I just recently watched the uh, fourth episode of Andor and I'm still loving this show. The writing's absolutely amazing, the cinematography is incredible, the set design, the wardrobe, costumes, props, it all looks exceptional. Except for this one thing that's been bothering me and a lot of other Star Wars fans really ever since the trailer dropped and that is this blaster rifle right here that the rebels are are using and in this episode episode four we've gotten a really really good look at this weapon and the reason a lot of people don't like this weapon is because it doesn't particularly feel star wars and it feels more real life that's really because this is just an ak variant that just has the stock literally cut off and it's been repainted that's pretty much the only difference and although a lot of people think that this is just lazy I don't really think personally that this is a lazy design choice. I think this was purposeful, and I say that because when you look at all the other props, wardrobe, weapons even, the attention to detail is just superb, it's excellent. This, this show clearly has spared no expense, so why would they cut back here with these weapons? Before I really go too far into my thoughts and opinions on this weapon, I do want to talk about the history of blasters in the Star Wars universe. Um, how these props were made, uh, where they came from, and how they've changed through the years. Just to give a little bit of design context before we talk about the design of this newest blaster. So if you're a big time Star Wars nerd, you'll already know that for A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, a lot of these blasters were literally just real life obscure guns that had been sliced up, pieces swapped around, repainted, and modified with some extra pieces that you know didn't, didn't exist in the real world, that were just Star Wars specific. And some really great examples of this, although there are just tons throughout these movies, is Han Solo's blaster, the DL-44, is actually just a Mauser uh, C96 that has had some parts swapped around, repainted, and, and slightly modified. But for the most part, you can really tell this blaster and gun share the exact same base. The Rebels Blast Tech DH-17 uses the Sterling L2A3 SMG as its base for that blaster with a different front end uh, that took off the stock. And the Sterling L2A3 was also used uh, as the base for another really famous Star Wars blaster, and we'll get more into that in just a second. The primary blaster rifle for the Rebellion is the A280 and A280C, and both of these blasters are just heavily modified AR-15s with STG-44 parts attached to the end. And of course, some extra Star Wars-y things added on, like the scope. Moving on to the Empire, we have the primary weapon of the Stormtroopers, and that is the Blastech E-11. And this also shares the same base with the DH-17, and that is the Sterling L2A3 SMG. And when you look at these two, you can really tell a pretty strong resemblance. And that, again, they just took this weapon, changed a few things, and added some stuff to make it look Star Wars-y. Another Stormtrooper example is the Blastex DLT-19, which is nearly identical to an MG-34. They only added just a few little pieces on one end and repainted it. Another lesser known Star Wars blaster for the Empire is the Blastex T-21 light repeating blaster. And this thing is also nearly identical to another real world uh, gun, and that is the Lewis gun. And really the only difference is that this thing is missing the round drum magazine on top of the weapon. So they just took the magazine off, maybe repainted a few things, added a couple pieces, and again, called it a brand new thing for Star Wars. Now for the Star Wars prequels, these blasters are again based off of and heavily modified uh, real world weapons for the most part. They did take quite a bit more creative liberty in creating these weapons, especially for the uh, clone troopers and for the CIS, but they did still try to uh, use blasters that were very reminiscent of real world weapons just to make it feel more grounded in reality. Now when Disney bought the franchise back in 2012, they decided to make brand new movies. They went with a different design choice when creating the blaster designs for episode 7, 8, and 9. A lot of these weapons don't really share any parts with real world guns. They're just kind of a continuation of the design of some really popular Star Wars weapons. And this is a pretty bold design choice and probably the reason why I've always felt like the Star Wars blasters in the sequel trilogy just felt a little strange to me. Now I do really appreciate that when they made the Star Wars spin-off movies and the TV shows, they have gone back to that original design of using real world weapons as the base and just swapping parts around, modifying them, repainting them, that sort of thing. Another awesome example of this is the Mandalorian's primary 
pistol, the IB-95 blaster pistol, and it is based off of a Bergman 1896, which to me really fits the Western sort of vibe of the Mandalorian. And then finally, I want to end off with Andor's blaster in Rogue One. And this is the A280 CFE. It is a version of the A280 blaster used by the Rebellion. And the CFE stands for Covert Field Edition. And that fits Andor perfectly because he's a spy. He's always going undercover. It has three different modes. You can have it in a blaster pistol mode, a blaster rifle configuration, and finally a blaster sniper rifle configuration. And when it's in that blaster pistol mode, you can really tell that it is just the grip and middle portion of an AR-15 with some added pieces. As you can clearly see, a ton of Star Wars weapons in the Star Wars universe are really just heavily modified, or honestly, in some cases, very slightly modified, real-world weapons that have been changed into Star Wars blasters. And I'm sure the original reason for doing this was because of really budget restraints, especially for A New Hope. However, I'm sure they've really continued this tradition because it does make the blasters feel real. They feel grounded. They feel like they could actually exist. That's because they're majority based off of guns in our real world. But why is it that this blaster in particular, although it follows these same rules, why does it feel so out of place? Really, a lot of the blasters that we've seen so far are based off of more obscure weapons, besides the A280. But when they've used more commonly known weapons like an AR-15, they've really heavily modified them to the point that unless you really know what you're looking for, they're almost indistinguishable from something from real life. Again, they feel reminiscent of something that we have here on Earth, rather than feeling like something that was plucked out of Earth and put in the Star Wars universe. This weapon is clearly a very slightly modified AK-47 variant, and that's one of the most recognizable weapons in our real world. If you're going to use something so recognizable, you really have to modify it quite a bit to make it feel more Star Wars-y. You can't just slack off on this one. I'm pretty sure a lot of fans would have felt just fine if this was a very obscure World War I or World War II weapon, or maybe even something even later, as long as it was not recognizable enough, and they made some few modifications, I'm pretty sure this was slide under the radar for the majority of Star Wars fans. And again, I don't think this was them being lazy. So far, everything we've seen would lead me to believe that they are not lazy when creating the designs for this show. It looks absolutely amazing. It's one of the best Star Wars shows we've had in a while. I do think this was a creative choice and not really the best one. With all this said, this weapon really hasn't bothered me as much as it did when I first saw it in the trailer. But I'd love to hear what you guys think. Do you think this ruins realism in Star Wars? Personally, I'm still a little bit on the fence. It doesn't bother me too much. I would love to know what you guys think about this blaster in the comments down below. And as I'm sure a lot of you already know, there are plenty of Star Wars blasters that were based off of real life weapons. And I'm thinking about possibly making a video talking about the history of the Star Wars blaster and going into some more detail on how these blasters were created from real life guns. And of course, if you'd love to know more about the blasters in the Star Wars universe and what weapons they were inspired by, I have a ton of articles down below that I use to uh, find information to create this video. And some of these articles are really cool. They go in depth on a lot of the newer Star Wars content like the Mandalorian Book of Boba Fett, Rogue One and Kenobi, and tons of brand new blasters have been made for those shows. And again, they're majority all created by using real life weapons, which is just so cool. And also guys, if you really enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like and subscribed. I put a lot of time and effort into my videos and it would just mean the world to me. So guys, that's it for this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.